Good morning, everybody. I'm trying to do this on the road. I am calling from Northern California. I'd like to welcome everybody to our call. Today is the 30th of March, 2022, and it is nine, it's actually 11.02 a.m. Pacific, 2.02 p.m. on the East Coast. We're going to start off with some news you can use. We normally don't do that on Wednesdays. We're going to get fired up today to do this because we've got some interesting news. Market Watch came out with um, an article day before yesterday. Uh, they once again have gone back and recalculated the numbers of pending home sales. Uh, I think I mentioned last week that they've changed the January numbers downward so that there's actually a decline in pending home sales. Uh, for the month of January, and then February, we know, was down from the previous year. Now they've gone back and said November, December, actually, when they redid their numbers and sharpened their fine point, uh, those numbers were down as well. So we have lost sales now. Pending home sales are down four months in a row. Worst part of the country is the Midwest. Midwest is down pretty significant percentages, uh, primarily because the Midwest tends to be more of a first-time homebuyer market. In other words, the majority of the houses sold tend to be first-time homebuyer homes. Uh, and that's the, the demographic, that's the segment that's getting killed. Uh, in particular, it's, you know, first-time homebuyers, people who want to get their first house, that kind of thing. Um, the, uh, the biggest problem, of course, is interest rates. Um, now, today, uh, the bigger problem in November, December, January was lack of homes on the market. There just were not enough homes available out there in the marketplace. And so that has changed a little bit. There are now more homes on the market for sale, but the interest rates during the month of February and now uh, March, and we're going to be ending March tomorrow, are up significantly. We're close to, and we will be about 5% interest rates probably within the next 30 days. Um, remember about a year ago, actually it was probably eight or nine months ago, we were 2.6%. For those borrowers, that's almost a doubling of interest, which is essentially a doubling of your payment uh, for house. A lot of people are getting priced out of the market. Plus, there is still not enough product on the market, so you can't buy what's not available to purchase. And if there is not enough product on the market and you can't afford it anyway, you're kind of SOL on that deal. And that's what we're seeing across the country right now. Uh, I expect this to continue to grow uh, the rest of the year on a month-by-month -month basis and year-to-date basis as well. The numbers are still above pre-pandemic levels. In other words, the sales are still on a dollar-by-dollar -dollar basis. They're still high enough that um, we're, we're exceeding where we were in early 2020 and 2019. But it is, it is a lower percentage in terms of the total numbers of sales uh, on a house-by-house -house basis going down. So um, you know, interesting things coming up. Now, where's the opportunity for you guys? Well, there are a lot of sellers who need to sell. And the reason uh, is the same reasons or reasons that always occur. And they are the normal things that create a motivated seller. Death, divorce, taxes, bankruptcy, job loss, medical issues, having to move, family issues, those types of things. So whether there's COVID going on or not, whether interest rates are high or low or in the middle or not, people still die. And people who die don't need the house that they lived in anymore. Uh, people get divorced, regardless of whether there's a COVID Omicron outbreak or not. Uh, when they get divorced, they don't, it, typically neither one of those parties can afford that house or wants to keep it. Um, so those things end up getting sold. So these types of activities continue. Uh, in addition, the economy is contracting, or we've talked about this in previous calls, what we call stagflation. So the the economy as a whole is stagnant, even though interest rates are going up. So we've got an inflationary cycle that the Fed is attempting to tamp down vis-a-vis -vis increased interest rates. Increased interest rates, as you guys all know, we've talked about previously, will tend to reduce inflationary pressures. It just makes it harder for people to buy things. And when there's less demand, uh, it tends to bring the prices down. So the raising of interest rates is designed to bring down inflation. So we're in a period right now where you've got inflation and you've got stagnant growth called stagflation when you put both of these together. The last time we saw this was 1971 or 72 under the Nixon administration. And he had to do some pretty remarkable things out there to 
get that under control. Things like price controls. In other words, it was against a lot of raised prices on a lot of goods um, and some services, in, in fact. Um, taking us off the, the gold standard, um, you know, where we could print our own money. We've been doing that now for, I guess, 50 years. Um, but uh, the government is working, or the Fed is working to get this thing under control. But for now, it's going to make it harder to have buyers be able to buy, which is going to actually make it easier for you guys to purchase because. Like I said at the beginning, uh, sellers still get divorced. They still file bankruptcy. They still have to move. Uh, they still die. And that, those create the normal cycle of motivated seller type product that you're going to want to get your hands on. So uh, we're seeing that in our business. We're getting you know more and more interested sellers and more flexible sellers. Uh, once again, because these houses that are typically in need of some additional work are not the ones that a real estate agent would want to list. They typically want to list the stuff you see on A&E and Home and Garden TV and Bravo, that these houses are immaculate, they're beautiful, they've got Italian marble on the counter. And as we all know, anybody who's been in the market for more than a few days, most of the houses look like crap. They're dated, they're old. Our housing stock has not been replenished in decades. In other words, we have more old housing out there that people live in than we've ever had before. And that in turn causes, uh, you know, reduced price. When a seller goes to sell a house and it's a mid-century house and nothing's been done to it since the Brady Bunch was on TV, uh, those guys are screwed. They, they're they not going to get top dollar for that. And people are starting to realize that. Uh, when that happens, they're less likely to want to list with a real estate agent. They're more likely to sell to an investor because they can save some money by not having to pay commissions. So expect your business to go up as realtors business goes down. All righty, that's news you can use for the 30th of March, 2022.